Hello and welcome to Pain Next Universal, a conversation with myself and Welsh. So today I'll be talking to Olivia. Olivia Bream is a Welsh Paralympia athletic who competes mainly in sprints and long jump events. In 2012, she qualified for the 2012 Summer Paralympics. So let's vote for the 100 meter and 200 meter sprints and it's also part of the women rally to, was also part of the women rally team she's also represented Wales at both the 2014 and 2018 commonwealth games winning gold in long jump at the gold coast games in 2018. she was born in gifford england to a mother welsh mother and scottish father but what's really interesting about her is that she has the cerebral palsy. What is it? This is a physical condition that affects movement, posture, and coordination. It's usually diagnosed at birth or in early childhood. It's not a learning disability, but some people with it might have a learning disability. She's used her pain and her challenge, which she was born with, to find her joy. And she finds her joy by doing activities which people never thought she'd be able to do. Meet Olivia. My name is Olivia Breen. I'm a Paralympian. I've got cerebral palsy. It affects my balance when I run. It affects, you know, my legs and my arms also to keep driving them. But I don't really feel it when I run. I've worked really hard on my core strength because I was really weak last year. Last year I wouldn't have been able to hold myself in the blocks. So I've worked really hard you know, to make, make sure I get stronger. But you know, I just get on with it really and just you know, forget about it. And just do my best really. I always feel really happy when I run. I just think about myself, I'm going to get to the finish line, I'm going to beat everyone, i get a PB, just run my race and then do my own thing. Three, two, one. Olivia is very easy to coach, she's very engaging. Once she's focused, she's 100%. When I first heard about Sky Academy, I got a letter in the post. The scholarship's going to really help me train. It will really help me with the funding, you know, warm weather training, media training. It's really good, I'm really happy that I've got it. And this guy introduced me to Oakland's College in St Albans, which is an athletics academy. And it's all there so I can focus on my studies, I can focus on my athletics. I want to get the golden beer, definitely. I want to be on that podium. Yep, yep, bang, 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 kick off. That's it, that's good. I really want to inspire people and get into disability sport because it can change your life sport, you know, and it can open a lot of doors for you. Olivia, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good. Well, now what fascinates me about your story is just how you've never let your, you know, your disability hold you back, which people might say, whatever it is yeah. that you're going through, you've never let that go help, you know, hold you back in any way. You've decided to utilize that to strive to be better and who you are today. Thank you so much. Definitely. Um, Thank you. going to start, can you tell me a little bit, for anyone who don't know who Olivia is, who are you? <laughs> Okay, so my name is Olivia Breen. I am 24 years old. I am a two-time Paralympian. Went to London 2012. I was the second youngest member on the team. Um, then I went to Rio 2016, and that didn't go to plan. But like, I just feel like you've always got to give everything you can and work your hardest at, and train every training session you have. Give it 100%. If you're not feeling 100%, just give it your all. Everything you have kind of thing. And... Um, when you compete, you're ready to go and trust your coach, trust your physio, trust everyone around you and have a good team around you. That's how you get, that's how you succeed kind of thing, you know, and just be the person you are. And if it doesn't go to plan, then don't look back, move forward. You know? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love that way of looking at things because, you know, we always look at things as, I'm um, always looking back and not thinking, you know what, it was happened for a reason and probably next time it will be, I will learn from that experience and be better. Definitely. Completely. I completely agree with that, you know, and just always look, keep positive and always look forward. Yes, yes. And um, you know what, tell me a little bit about your, you know, to do a para, um, Paralympics, you have to have a little, uh, disability. What is yours? So my, my disability is cerebral palsy. 
Um, so it's the result from there. So I've got a twin brother, we were premature, and I had my injury when I was four years old, and we think that was a result from cerebral palsy. And my parents, obviously, I have a, my parents were quite good to have a twin brother, so they could see the difference with what I was doing, what he was doing. So they were like, why is Livy not doing the same as what he's doing, kind of thing. Anyway, I got diagnosed with cerebral palsy when I was two years old, and I'm also deaf as well, so that was a result from meningitis. But, you know, yeah. <laughs> and so how, how have you dealt with life? How has this caused you tremendous pain when you were much younger growing up? How did this, you know, how did this affect you growing up? Um, so obviously, like, my parents were hugely supportive. I've got a really good family network. They're really supportive, like, going to physiotherapy to help myself with palsy. Um, sport has helped me massively. Um, my teachers have been really good at school. They've been really supportive, you know. And it's just, I'm a very sociable person. Like, and I just think my family, my parents have been a big influence on me. And they've made me the people I am kind of thing. Yeah. And just always, keep, always try your best. That's <laughs> true. I think um, it doesn't matter what you're going through. What is important is that you, um, you know, everyone is struggling. I mean, yeah. I mean, Paralympics, you must see so many different kinds of disability. How does that make you feel though when you see others who are going through some, somewhat similar things to what you're going through? How does that make you feel when you're, on, when you're doing that sport? Um, it, makes you feel, it makes you feel part of a team. So say like when you hear all different stories, it makes you feel part of the team together and you're in it together supporting each other. And it's really nice to have that support network, you know. And say like, I've never seen someone with the same disability as me, as me until I was 15. I was just like, I was inspired. I was just like, wow, like, this is fascinating, you know. And I was just taken by, I was taken by surprise. I was like, this is so nice to see someone with the same disability as me. And it was just so inspiring to see that. And then that was the day I was like, right, I'm doing the sport. I'm doing athletics. I'm getting classified. I'm going to do everything I can to make myself better. And, you know, and I felt very part of Paralympic sport because it just felt, it felt, I don't know, it just felt more at home. Yeah. You know? And it was a really good feeling. So how, where did you believe, where did you begin your sports? How did you begin? So basically, I started the sport when I was 15. So I, my parents, I was always, my, I joined City Sports when I was 13. And my parents were like, Libby, like, you should get yourself into disability sport. And I was like, no, like, I love being back at the field, you know, just training with my friends and stuff. Anyway, there was one day I was just like, do you know what? Take, let's take the opportunity. And um, I went to the England Athletics Talent Day. And that was the day I saw someone with cerebral palsy. And I was just like, this is amazing. Like, I want to do this. It was so fun. We went to Chelmsford. Such a fun day out. And um, then they were like, well, I'm going to get you classified. It's the day we're happening. And I was like, okay, let's, let's go. Let's do it. And so I went in January 2012 to get classified at Lee Valley in London. And then um, when I was, I ran a race in Kingston. And I was number one match in, the, in my category in the UK. And I was just like, what? Like, this is, this is incredible. It's amazing. And then they started getting in touch with me. And they were like, we wanted to go and get internationally classified in May, in Croatia. And I ran against number one in my category. And I was just like, in the world. And I was just like, what's going on? <laughs> and then um, I got classified internationally so I could run in board and stuff. And... I went, they then invited me to go to the European Championships in Holland in June. So I raced every weekend in, from, in the summer in 2012, you know, from May till August, let's say, because I just wanted to get better, you know. And I won two bronze medals in 2012 at the Europeans. And on the 9th of July, I got a call telling me when I was in school saying that I'd been selected to represent Great Britain at the Parliament again. It was just, wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. Definitely. How do you use sports? Because, you know, when you have um, any kind of illness, whatever, whether it be a disability or chronic illness, yeah. or physical, physical disability, how did you use sports to find your joy? How did that help you to become okay. this? Um, so I'll, I'll tell you a story. Um, <laughs> when I was, obviously school was quite difficult for me. I've got some like learning difficulties and stuff in, for school. And I just found it hard to like concentrate and stuff in the class. But obviously I was trying my best in school and tried you know everything but um I ran my first sports day when I was five years old and I won 
And I just remember that feeling so well. I was just like, I found something that I'm good at, you know? And it was just the best feeling. And, I, and my dad, my dad used to be a sprinter and obviously that's in the, in the family. So it was a really, it was just a really nice feeling to find that you're good at something. And since then I just love running, you know, I run everywhere instead of walking, you know, I just fell over when I was younger. And yeah, and, and I always loved sport. I've always never tried like horse riding, tap dancing, uh, loads of other sports, you know, trampolining, to see that I enjoy them. And I think it was always my one. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so absolutely proud of you. Um, <laughs> I, I read an article, you said, you talk about dreams coming true, yes. right? So how did you, Olivia, make yes. your own dream come true? Um, motivation, hard work, and determination. Those are my three words I use for myself. Oh, what did winning mean to you? What did winning mean to you? Well, um, what does winning means everything to me. So obviously when I won the Commonwealth Games and the World Championship in 2017, it's just all your hard work's been paid off, all the training, you know, um, making sacrifices to your social life, your life, everything, moving leaving home and stuff, you know, being away from your family, but it's just the best feeling. And, and I love, I just love winning. It's an amazing feeling. <laughs> no, I'm really, I'm really excited. I, I, I got to talk to you because, you know, you really shine light on a positive <laughs> way. You look at it and anyone looking at you will never know you have any kind of disability. You just think you're just a normal child. You know, yeah, sports like helped it massively so that it's helped my core strength and say like when I was little I didn't learn to, I didn't walk till I was three and my parents also helped me so much like having loads of different ther physiotherapy to try and help my coordination and stuff. But athletics has helped me so much as well. Yeah, that was about it as well still. Yeah. And uh, and our final question is uh, how would you encourage other people who are going through who are born like yourself? or and, you know, we, we have, a, have a kind of disability, how would you encourage them to do something similar and find their joy? I would say take every opportunity you are given and never say no to anything and always try your best. Wow. <laughs> Such simple words and so yeah. much. <laughs> <laughs> every opportunity. So you <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, because you know it's very true um we're given opportunities but most of the time we're, we're too scared that we always say no yeah to say definitely no. not to have the confidence to go into a room and think you don't know anyone but you can still build confidence from that because you never know where it can take you that's very true wow yeah. olivia thank you so much and what's what's next for you what what was next what do you have next um, well hopefully we've got indoors this year but i hope you fingers crossed for covid <laughs> And um, hopefully pad the Tokyo Panamans next year. So oh, next year. Oh wow. Yeah. So you're yeah. hoping to qualify for that and Yes, and hopefully get my own individual medal. Oh wow. I would love to talk to you. Make yes. sure make sure <laughs> you me an interview to speak to you about and we have our conversation so you Yeah, that'd be amazing. <laughs> and I wish you all the best with that. Thank you very much. And it's lovely so to meet you. Hey, I really appreciate this. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Oh,